I hope I see Andrew one day. I think I'd like to share that with him. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Be because your problem is, is you think if you give God your all, He's not going to provide for you. Yeah, yeah. Don't you understand yeah. how many thousands of followers He's provided for? There you go. You know, I mean, and, and they gave up a lot more than you'd have to give up. Amen? And uh, my, my point in saying that is this man was kept by a few things. You know what, he, what else he was kept by? His finances. You know, uh, Matthew 23, 23 says, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye pay tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ye have, um, these ought ye have done and not to leave the other undone. This is the, look at how much money I have. That's not your money. That's right. That's right. Preach. Uh, see, a lot of people, they serve their pocketbook. They serve their employer. You know, I, I've heard from numerous preachers, and I, th I think there's a, a lot of uh, truth in this. You can find a lot about what a person loves by just merely looking at their checkbook. And you can find out a lot about what a person loves by merely looking at what they do, spending their time. Yeah. See, they serve their pocketbook, they serve their debtors, they serve their employer much with much more fervor, with much, with much more dedication, with much more commitment than they would even the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Well, if I serve the Lord Jesus Christ, my bills aren't going to get paid. Who that's what they say. Oh yeah. That's what they say. You know, and and if see because you know, I mean, I, I've heard of a man. I've heard of a man. I don't even know the man, but I've heard of a man that would street preach on his lunch breaks, and I was just so impressed with that. I was like, you know what? That guy doesn't care about what his employer thinks. That guy's a Christian. That guy's a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just goes street preach on his lunch breaks. How far, how far do you think that corner was from? They're probably pulling into, his manager's pulling into that corner, and he's like, if you don't repent, you're going to burn! And then come in, clock in. How's it going, guys? <laughs> and they're like, what is up with this guy? He doesn't care what people think. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying, you know, if that guy was going to go do that and go to work and always be busted, hiding out and sleeping on the job and there's Christians that do that too you know uh, I th I've met quite a few people that say you know I'm afraid to even put you know anything like on my cards or, or my business that would imply that I'm a Christian because I hear a lot of guys say man I, I, don't, I would rather not have a Christian guy even work because so many of them are so lazy they're so uh, conniving and it's just like, you know, whatever you think about that, I'm just telling you what they say. That's right. They do say that. But, you know, this guy, was, he was more uh, concerned with the finances. Look at Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Look at verse 16. Matthew 19, verse 16. And it says this, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. That's a rhetorical question, by the way. That's a rhetorical question. He's like, Why are you calling me good? You know God's only good. Yeah. Yeah. Must be God. But if if thou wilt answer into life, keep the com um, enter into life, keep the commandments. Verse 18, he said unto them, Which? Jesus said, uh, thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother, and thou uh, shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these have, have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? You know, Jesus doesn't tell him, No, you didn't. Jesus didn't tell him that. If anybody would know if that guy kept those, it'd be Jesus. Jesus said, no, you're a liar. Jesus didn't say that. He didn't say, why would you lie to me? He didn't say that. What's he say? 
Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. Verse 22. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. What was his problem? Finances? The love of money? The root of all evil? It's the love of money. It is the love of money. It's not your money. That's the problem. You think it's your money. You know, and uh, your money goes for your goals, goes for your future, goes for the things you want it to go to, but you forgot that your money isn't your money. Your money is the Lord's money. Yes. Amen. Well, no, I had to work for it. Well, who gave you the ability to work? There you go. Oh, no, well, I mean, hey, you know, well, I knew somebody that got me the job. Well, how, do you think, uh, how do you think that thing all got set up? Go. God set it up. Amen. Mm -hmm. God made it so you know that guy, so you get that job, so you get that paycheck, so you do something pleasing the Lord with that money. Are you pleasing the Lord with your money? The sluggard scribe wasn't. Why? Because he was rash. He was not counting the cost. Luke 9, 58 says, And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. There was a lack of thought. In Luke 14, 28 it says, For which of you... Intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest haply, after he hath laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, and was not able to finish. You better count the cost. Amen. You know, and I know we, we, we try and wrestle with these people that receive the Lord, but you know what? They're not ready to count the cost on that. Because yeah. they know there's going to be a cost. You know, they, they know. If they're going to start following the Lord, you know what they know? They're going to have to stop drinking alcohol. Yeah. They know if they're going to start following the Lord, you know, they're probably going to have to dress different. You know, they know if they're going to start following the Lord, you know, things in the house probably got to change. Yeah. And they don't want to. They don't want to. They don't want to. So you know what? They'll just go to hell. And they'll bring their family to hell. And they won't care about their neighbors going to hell. They won't care about the town going to hell. Because they don't want to change. Right. Right. And you know what? In hell, I, they'll still be cursing God in hell. That's really something to think about. Huh? Somebody burning in a lake of fire, still cursing God. What a shame. The slugger scribe, he was rash. He had a lack of thought. There was a lack of seriousness. I got money. I'm good. The Bible says no man's good. You know, I mean, a lot of guys, you know, wear hand out tracks. I'm good. You know, every once in a while I say, the Bible says no man is good. Yeah. Take one. <laughs> you know, and... I mean, you know, we kind of laugh at that, but that's a fact. Yeah. You're not good. Yeah. You know, and just because you're sitting there telling me that you're good tells me that you're worse than the average Joe. Because you think you're good. You know what? There's a lack of follow-through also with the uh, scribe. Because he, he came to Jesus. He's like, oh, I'm going to follow you wherever you go, Jesus. But he wasn't ready to follow through, was he? He was just talking like this. Wasn't a man of his word. See, the sluggard scribe, he had rigor mortis. He was doctrinally debilitated. Revelation, it says, Ye are alive and are dead. Yeah. He was a rejecter of Christ mentally, but not verbally. He was proper. See? Uh, Proverbs 23 7 says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know what? And you saw what this man's thoughts, even though he didn't say it. Because of the way he lived. You know, and as you think in your heart, it's going to eventually come out. It's going to eventually come out. You know, that, that's why God is constantly telling you to capture your thoughts under the obedience of Jesus Christ. Don't let those things fly off like that. Because what goes in comes out. He was a rejecter of Jesus Christ practically, but not verbally. 
In James 2.18 it says, Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have worked. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. A follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, at some point in time, there will be something somewhere along the